There's some battles coming. There's some struggles coming. But I didn't know where. And I didn't know how. And I didn't know why. I just knew and the Holy Ghost was preparing me. Preparing me. The Lord impressed upon me the, the coming opposition. It's going to happen. It always does. It always does. If you've been around this more than a couple, three weeks, if you get the Holy Ghost, I guarantee you get the Holy Ghost on Sunday, you're going to meet the devil sometime through that week. He ain't going to leave you alone. He's going to mess with you. I remember daddy telling me, and this, this just ought to excite us to death. I remember daddy telling me, I was just a little bitty boy. I heard him preach it. Y'all think I'm crazy. Y'all should have heard daddy preach. Now, we went to Heron, Ma. Amanda and I went to Heron the other day. And uh, remember when Daddy preached up there? Boy, they had a big, fine church, man. It's still, it's still all right. But back in the day, man, it was primo. And Brother Pete, they had doors plumb across the back. Plumb across the back. Now, y'all remember when Daddy preached? His shirt tail flopped, his pocket flopped, his handkerchief went in every pocket. You know, he, his hair fell down across... He was wild. He was wild. Somebody told me one time, you'd be lucky if you have to preach your daddy is. I said, you're exactly right. <laughs> I'd be proud as I can be. But he told me, this big old fancy church, and boy, it was fancy too. Man, it had that new car smell in it. And <laughs> y'all think mama hides her face when I preach. Whew. Should have been around back in the day. Before we were politically correct. Oh, God have mercy. And uh, Daddy wasn't afraid of nobody. Or nothing. Or nothing. He wasn't. He wasn't. And uh, he got up to preach, you know, behind that pretty desk. And he said, Judy, I can tell if my shirt tails out. I can tell if my, my britches, because it would, it would stick out, you know, or my pipe. If I do anything crazy, I can see myself in the back of that church. <laughs> but Daddy told, preached it when I was a little boy. He preached a lot of messages that I remember, that I remember well. But he preached, you better be really, really happy when hell comes after you. You better be excited when the devil brings out all the big guns against you because you know why? That means he ain't got you. That means he's worried about you. <laughs> that means you got something that he's afraid of. And he can tear down your meat house. He can stop heaven by stopping us. That's the only way. Sister Leah, that is the only way the devil can get back at God. Because when he got all puffed up, the Bible says that the Lord cast out devils with his finger. What did he tell his 70 that returned with joy? He said, I beheld Satan as lightning. Brother, when he came out of heaven, he came out with the quickness. When the Lord said enough is enough, he was gone. He ain't no problem for the Lord. But the only way that he can get to the Lord is through us. God help me, Jesus. I may preach so long today, I have to cancel tonight. Think about how beautiful it is to recognize all of this stuff and to realize all this stuff. And Sister Eloise, look what, then what, he, says, what he does, what he says, what he gives us. He said, you're going to face some opposition and you're going to face some wiles and the devil's kind of a worthy adversary and he's got a lot of stuff coming. But finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, I'm going to give you, God have mercy, I feel the Holy Ghost so strong up in this place. I'm going to give you everything you need. I came with a sure word of prophecy today. I'm not discouraged, I'm encouraged. Why am I encouraged? Because the devil's upset. Remember, <laughs> the devil's mad and I'm glad and I know what to please him. Bottle of ink to make him stink, a bottle of wine to make him shine, and a big old number 13 right on his behind. We've got to rise up with the people of God. The devil's mad, he's upset, but I'm not discouraged, I'm encouraged because we're doing a good work. I'm not coming down, I'm putting my trust in the living God. I'm not coming down, I'm not stopping, I'm going to 
to stay in the battle. I'm going to stay in the fight because this is the only side that wins. Because I've read the back of the book. And thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. The Bible says that we have a more sure word of prophecy. Now, Brother Pete, what he's referring to there is when Peter and James and John went on the Mount of Transfiguration with the Lord. And they saw him meet Moses and Elijah. And then Peter says, but we have a more sure word of prophecy. Because everybody didn't get to experience the Mount of Transfiguration. But everybody can experience a more sure word of prophecy. Because what does the Bible say that that sure word of prophecy is? It says, as of a light that shines into a dark place. The darkness can't stop it. The darkness doesn't intimidate it. The darkness is forever subject to the light. And this is a little bit cliched, but the darker the night. Oh, that gives another, that's another new chink in the, in the, the ladder, climbing in the ladder. Then his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Our light is made brighter. It's all about perspective. It's all about the way you see things. Am I messed up sometimes? Yes. Do I make mistakes sometimes? Yes. Do I have to repent of my sins? Often, 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 often. But I know the truth. I know what the rock is. And I stand upon the solid rock, Christ Jesus. I'm going to make it. I may have to ride the altar, but I'm going to make it. I may have to read the book every morning, noon, and night, but I'm going to make it. I may have to sing Amazing Grace forwards and backwards, fast and slow, but I'm going to make it. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I'm going to paraphrase the apostolic study Bible just a little bit. Again, I want to encourage you, if you ain't got one of those, you need to get one. That's what needs to be number one on everybody's Christmas list. For those who have become ignorant of what the Spirit desires and those that respond lethargically or apathetically to evil, these passages may seem to be coming from an out-of-date place. Because the one that ain't fighting a battle, he don't need this scripture. These passages may seem to be unnecessary. That's coming from a back long ago place. Such cases, the evil which is to be exposed by the church, the ungodliness, the immorality, the unholiness that is to be exposed by the church feeds on ignorance, grows stronger with indifference, and becomes increasingly hidden and therefore dangerous by spiritual inactivity, which is almost always replaced by carnal activity. We have got to be aware. We have got, it doesn't matter whether you're still in the fight or you've already been defeated. The enemy's against you. And this passage still applies. The devil and his angels are our enemy. That's who the fight is against. The enemy isn't your friend. He isn't the enemy of God by whom he's already defeated. He is our enemy. And that's why we put the armor we put on, it isn't ours. It isn't our design. It isn't our strategies. It isn't our confidence. It isn't our ability. The armor that we must put on is the armor of God. It has been designed by him for the battles we must face. And if you put on the whole armor of God, you are guaranteed to come. Come forth victorious. Yeah. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Again, this is, some, this is something that man has come up with, but it's given to us by God. This is a plan given to us by God for us to make it, for us to be triumphant, for us to stand. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. It is with the protection of this armor that we will be able to withstand in the evil day. It's assured of coming. And having done all, having done all, what does that mean, having done all? It means having taken on the whole armor of God. Having completed the work of the Lord as a good soldier to stand. Verse 14, having your loins girt about with truth. This is important and it's no coincidence that it's first in the Bible. Why? Because the enemy, the one that's after you is a liar. God have mercy. And he's the father of all lies and he uses deceit and trickery to make evil appear good. I've, I've had it happen recently. I've heard it happen recently where somebody dilly-dallying around with the things of the world. They first told me, I know it's wrong and I don't want to do it. I wish I could get rid of it. Until now, they've embraced it and it's all right. You say, ah, oh, come on now. Don't you think, don't be so arrogant. God have mercy. Please don't be so arrogant or ignorant that you feel like that you can play the devil's game and win. Having your loins girt about with truth. He's coming at you with lies. He's coming at you with trickery. He's coming at you with mockery. He's coming at you with something a little bit close to the truth but a different slant on it so you'll believe it, so you'll buy it. And the book says, believe a lie and be damned. The girdle or belt of truth allows the soldier of God to fight without hindrance. How many of you ever read the Zane Gray books and you remember him talking about the Texas Rangers? Uh, and he, he constantly get reiterated this frame. There ain't no stopping a man who knows he's right and keeps on coming. That's why we got to have loins girt about with truth. Uh, we can't have any hindrances of things that are shady and things that are, are if, ands, or buts. we got to have truth. Uh, the Word is truth. The Lord is truth. The way is truth. Uh, and the way is the life. Uh, not just in principles and precepts of Scripture, but also in application in our lives. Uh, we have got to be honest before the Lord and make me righteous. Make me holy. Make me true as only you can. And then the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. The righteousness of God, not our righteousness. This ain't something that you get good enough till you finally get to put it on. This ain't like Saul's armor when David said, I hadn't proved it. This is an armor, Brother David, that God wants us to wear. It's not our righteousness. Our righteousness is his filthy rags. The devil ain't intimidated by your righteousness. He's intimidated by the righteousness of God because it is what he's trying to defile. God always does what is right. His way is always perfect. He is, in fact, the way. The breastplate covers the heart. This is a protector of the pure heart and defense against corruption of our heart and our emotions. The breastplate of righteousness. Verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The right boots on your feet, spiritually, metaphorically speaking. It's not talking about this body. It's talking about our spirit. This area... A focus comes from an Old Testament principle where the messages of God bring tidings of true peace. And this peace, this peace stabilizes the soldier of God, thereby protecting him from the distractions and allowing the effectiveness of his message to be clear. And allowing the effectiveness of his message to be clear. How many of you know that in this day that we live, we cannot afford to be distracted? We cannot afford to be caught up in the drama and all the hullabaloo that, that characterizes the world. We cannot be caught up in all the craziness uh, that the world is propagating and pushing on us. Uh, we can't listen to talking heads, uh, talk about everything except the right thing. Uh, just been trying to act like they're smart. Uh, we've got to get focused on the Word of God uh, and on the plan of God. Uh, and the Bible said when you see these things begin to come to pass, uh, look up, uh, lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh. You ain't got to try to figure out the world. You ain't got to try to figure out this mess. Uh, you got to get in the world. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The purpose of the shield of faith is made clear to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Think about it. Why is it fire? 
You think he wants to shoot you and put a little burn spot on you? No. What does fire do when it penetrates? It spreads. It spreads. And its purpose is to destroy everything. The faith factor comes in when I don't understand why I'm having to fight this. When I don't understand why I'm having to go through this. When it seems unfair, it's then my faith in God holds me up. It's then that I learn to trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not unto my own understanding. And when you still trust God and you still have faith and you're barely putting one foot in front of the other, but that faith is constantly blocking the fiery darts of the wicked. That's why the Lord told Peter, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. No matter what's going on, you got to keep the faith. Amen. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God, the helmet of salvation. Brother David taught us on the whole armor of God some time ago, and he made a, a nice picture of it. But the helmet of salvation, first, it guards my mind. It guards my eyes. It guards my ears. It guards my mouth to enable me to stay focused on the task at hand, to stay focused on the true enemy. That's why I have strongly suggested and advised, and I think it's been, it's come to fruition. I don't have this for him to put up there. But for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Then he said, take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Every child of God has a responsibility to become familiar and proficient with the Word of God. It, nobody's required to memorize the entire 66 books of the Bible. But Brother David, I believe with all of my heart that we need to pull some of them out of there. When I go through a trial, i got to pull some of them out of there. You say, well, I don't know if that's the way it ought to be or not. Uh, you know what? You can think, won't, wish, dream, whatever you'd like for it to be. Come up with something new. It ain't going to be a cool new song. It ain't going to be a cool new friend. It ain't going to be a good inspirational book that you have. But it's going to be the Word of God. Because when Jesus Christ himself battled against the enemy the first words out of his mouth were it is written verse number 18 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That word in there, a very obscure word that's in there right now is called, it's the title of my message today, there unto, there unto, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto. Where is there unto? to have it on the whole armor of God, to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. It's not about pumping iron and getting big muscles. It's not about being smarter and being more intelligent. It's about having more faith in the, the things that God has given us. And when we learn to walk in the whole armor of God, not only are we benefiting ourselves. Uh, With all perseverance, all perseverance and supplication, perseverance and supplication. That perseverance comes from us. It's a made up mind. It's a commitment that says I'm in it to win it. Whatever I got to do, Lord, I want to win it. And supplication means I'm putting it where it's the Lord. I'm sacrificing this body. I'm, I'm giving up whatever it takes to be in the presence of the Lord because I don't know about you. You listen to me right now. And this is, a, this is from a carnal point of view. But it also weeds over into a spiritual point of view. If you and I sit down and we start playing checkers and you beat me, it makes me mad. It's, listen, it's not whether you win or lose. It's how you play the game. Wasn't made up by nobody that ever played the game. I heard a brother preach about this at camp meeting. You know what Vince Lombardi said? 
When it ain't everything, it's the only thing. You say, well, I don't know about that. Well, you know what? It may not be the case with checkers, Chinese, checkers, chess, or t-ball, basketball, wiffle ball, or tether ball, but it is in the kingdom of God. you got to make up your mind. I'm winning. Losing's not an option. I'm casting off my beggarly robes. I'm casting off the things of the back, and I'm in it to win it. I may make it crawling. I may make it rolling. I may make it with blood flowing down my face. I may make it with my shirt collar soaked with tears, but not making it is not an option. That's right. I ain't going to be mad at you. I'm going to be mad at me because I didn't win. And don't be feeling sorry for me trying to let me win either. I got to beat you fair and square. Thereunto. Thereunto is the destination of standing. Victory, overcoming, not just for ourselves, but for all the saints. The power, the power of a fully armored body of believers. And here's what I'm asking today. I think I have an altar call. But there's got to be a few of us. There's got to be a few of us, at least for the beginning, that realize and recognize that i got to put on the whole armor of God. And somebody might say, here's a question that you may be wondering right now. Well, how do I do it? Is anybody wondering that question? So you all know then. My goodness, we're going to have some revival up in this place then. The devil ain't got no hope. Let me tell you how you put on the whole armor of God because you're scared to raise your hand. Here's how you do it. Oh, Lord, my God. Lord, I want on the helmet of salvation. I pray, God, that you put on me the helmet of salvation because it's your armor, you see. And if I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it from God. So it's in prayer that I say, Lord, Put on the helmet of salvation because my mind's got to be right. My mouth has got to be right. My eyes have got to be right. My ears have got to be right. Uh, it's salvation. And everything that, that rotates neck up uh, has got to be concerned with salvation because everything that's in here can cause me to not be saved uh, because it's led by my carnal flesh uh, instead of the Spirit. So i got to get on the helmet of salvation. So, Lord, would you put it on me? I want to pray on the helmet of salvation. And Lord, I want to pray on. I know it's not how it is in the Bible, but this is an easy way for you to remember it. Lord, I want to pray on the breastplate of righteousness. I want my heart to be righteous. Not as the world views righteousness, but as you view righteousness. I didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost to win friends and influence people. God didn't call me to preach the gospel. And Brother, Brother Chester Wright said it at camp meeting, but I'm not going to say it yet. But he, not, not just yet. Well, when I get old, I can't wait till I get old, man. Oh, you can say a whole lot of stuff uh, and everybody will just say, I don't worry about it, he's just old. <laughs> but oh, I can't wait, Sister Michelle, even if I go crazy, I'm going to write it all down so I can remember it. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I'm practicing right now, Brother Billy. <laughs> yeah. I want my heart to be righteous. I gotta have on the breastplate of Brother McKinney's over here getting on to me. <laughs> Brother, you ain't old. He's, he's been 39 for 27 years in a row. 40 years. the breastplate of righteousness on God I pray you make my heart righteous I pray you forgive me take everything out of my heart that shouldn't be there anything out of my heart that's carnally motivated that's fleshly motivated anything that's hindering me and it can't hinder me without hindering somebody else breastplate of righteousness is in my loins girt about with truth I don't want to be I don't want to be think about I don't want to be uh, encumbered about by falsehood and fables and things that aren't reality. I don't want to be encumbered about with things that are going to hinder me. I just want to walk in truth. And that way I can fight fearlessly and I can fight freely. I can, I can stand for I don't have to be encumbered about by, by things that aren't true, that aren't right. And then, Lord, I, 
I pray my feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That everywhere I go, everywhere these feet take me, it should never be the case for a child of God to walk up and somebody to say, oh my goodness. Not out loud, but in your mind. Y'all know how you do that. Everywhere a child of God goes, they should bring peace with them. Everywhere a child of God goes, they should bring. If you're going to fight battles, fight them at home on your knees. But when you walk out, let it be a smile from ear to ear. You say, I can't do that all the time. You know what? You can if you've got on the whole armor of God. Take the shield of faith. I referenced it just a little while ago. I'm, I'm coming to a close. We're a little bit messed up in our mind, Brother David, because I'm thinking right now, boy, if I could have kept them jumping and hooping and hollering all the way up to the altar call, then I'd have an altar full of people. And half of them may not even know why they was there. But the Bible has just told us if you want to stand, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Brother Greg, we're going to face trials. We're going to face heartaches, Brother Billy. There's going to be times when I need to be on that spray rig and it's raining. And there ain't nothing you can do about it either. There's going to be times when there's too much month at the end of the money. Huh? But I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. So I, I, I want to I just let you know as you stand. <laughs> Stand with me. Finally. <laughs> Finally, my brethren. Finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. The power of his might. I'm struggling and I've got problems and I've got issues. You know what? We're going to have to deal with it because it's a byproduct of revival. I said, we're going to have to deal with it because it's a byproduct of revival. But the Bible has given us everything we need to make it. There's not, a, there's not a new plan. There's not a new trick. There's not a new, new scripture that's coming out of there somewhere. It's the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. That you may be able to stand, Brother Billy. It's how we're supposed to be. It's how we're supposed to be. It's not a good idea. It's not something to shoot for and settle way down here. But it's where you arrive. It's where you're supposed to be. It's the plan of God. If you'll take unto you the whole armor of God. It's not yours. It's not made up. It's in the Word of God.